Hello, Zwerg here, and today we're gonna go over a very quick guide of the newest Destiny 2 dungeon, Warlord's Ruin. First thing first, I got very lost at the very beginning, so if you get lost too, you're gonna jump up on this rock where it has a red flag on top. And then you're gonna look over to the mountain, there should be another platform you can jump to, and then you're just going to run slash jump around the mountain and take that pathway straight to the entrance. When you made it to the boss room, you're going to see three cages floating up in the air. Once you have the encounter started, do some act clear and eventually you'll get trapped inside that cage. The way to get out is by shooting the three taken eyes that spawn around your cage. Some may be further up, some may be further down. You can also help and shoot the taken eyes from your teammates from their cages to help them get out and vice versa. Once all three have been shot, it releases you and you can go back down. On the ground, the boss is going to spawn in these Taken looking lanterns. These are lanterns with a Taken ball inside of it. It also shows a white ring on the ground where you need to stand inside of. The longer you sit in it, the Taken ball is eventually going to explode and disappear. On the left side of your screen is a buff with a countdown called Imminent Wish. If you do not explode any of the lanterns before the timer is out, you're going to have to redo it. So make sure you explode at least one of the Taken Lanterns before that timer runs out, and that is exactly what starts damage phase. So if you explode more Taken Lanterns, that means you're going to have a longer damage phase. After damage phase, you're going to rinse and repeat everything until the boss is dead. You are now going to get spawned into a jail cell along with your teammates. Two of your teammates are going to spawn in a specific jail cell with a skeleton on the ground pointing to a tally number that is going to be very important as well as the color. Your third teammate is going to spawn in a jail cell without a tally number, but is going to have access to shooting a lever when needed. Looking around, each person should be able to find two of these frisbee looking things attached to the wall. If you shoot the frisbees once, it is going to spin counterclockwise. If you shoot it a second time, it is going to stop. And if you shoot it a third time, it is going to start spinning clockwise. This is where you're going to use those tally marks. Orange tally marks means counterclockwise and white tally marks means clockwise. So with this example, the number 5 is orange, which means we're going to have to activate 5 of those frisbees to spin counterclockwise, and my teammate having 1 white tally, which means we're going to have 1 of those frisbees spin clockwise. Having all 6 of those frisbees spin a certain direction, have that one teammate who has access to the lever shoot the lever and that should open the gates for you. After the prison, you're going to get put in a maze with a bunch of traps. So don't tell your friends or anybody you're playing with and let them run through the traps themselves because that would be really funny. But there are these traps that come out of the side of the walls if you do cross in front of it. So there's times where you have to jump over or you have to crouch or slide to get through it. Not only that, but there are also floor traps. So make sure you watch out which hole you're actually entering. There could be holes located around a maze with spikes below it that are very deadly. And then once you get outside, you're going to have to do some mountain climbing. On the side of the mountains, be careful which part of the platform you're stepping on. There is a slight chance that that part of the mountain may break apart and you're gonna fall to your death. But again, you don't exactly want to tell your clanmates or your friends about any of these traps because I think it would be really funny to watch. Once you've made it to the second encounter, it is going to be a little similar to the first one. Start the encounter and it is going to spawn a bunch of adds and eyes surrounding the boss. The eyes do a bunch of damage, so what you can do is kill most of them and leave some up while add clearing everything else. Once you've add cleared, you can kill the rest of the eyes and that's going to spawn a big scorn dude on each side. While the scorn dudes are spawning, everything is going to get very cold, unless you are standing near one of these torches. These torches give off warmth, because if you're away from them, you're going to get a freezing counter, and if that counter goes up to 9, that is when you're going to freeze and die. So make sure you keep going back to the torch if you need to warm up really quickly. Around that time, you're going to have a buff on the left side of your screen called Imminent Wish with a countdown. Make sure to kill the Scorn Dude before the countdown is over. The Scorn Dude, when he dies, is also going to spawn in one of those Taken Lanterns that you need to sit in so the Taken part explodes. 
However, you want to get that done before the imminent wish countdown is over and you also have to pay attention on your freezing temperature before you freeze and die. After exploding the Taken Lanterns, in the middle you're going to see a fireball spawn, which means the more Taken Lanterns you explode before the timer's over, the more of the fireballs you'll get. Take that fireball and bring it over to the boss. The boss has four pillars surrounding him with wood on top of it. So you're taking that fireball and lighting that wood on fire. Once that last person carries the last fireball to the pillar, that is when damage phase is going to happen. The pillar of fire is going to have a ring on the ground, so make sure you're standing inside of it. Everything outside of it is going to be freezing cold. You have about 15 to 20 seconds time to do damage before that fire goes out, and you're going to go to another fire pillar to do more damage. So you have a total of four damage phases. You're going to repeat that cycle until the boss is dead. However, I have one more tip. When the Scorn dude spawns, he actually can spawn up to two of those Taken Lanterns on the ground, so there's a possibility for you to spawn four fireballs as long as you explode all four of those Taken Lanterns. Moving on to the boss room, when you start the encounter, it's going to spawn a bunch of adds along with these blights that put the Taken Goo on the ground. The Taken Goo slows you and does damage to you, so definitely take those out as well. After some ad clearing, you can shoot those six eyes surrounding the boss, and that's what's going to spawn the Scorn Dudes along with the Imminent Wish countdown. While you are doing damage to the Scorn, he's already going to spawn in a few of those Taken Lanterns, and if you can capture them, you can totally do that. However, at the same time, you're going to get an additional buff that says Corruption. If that timer is over, you are going to die. So you're going to have to look out for three specific ads that spawn during that time frame that are going to be immune to anything but punches. So yes, you're going to be playing tag with them. You're going to punch the enemy and give them the Corruption buff. However, if they punch you back, they will give it back to you. So make sure you punch and run. If the enemy already has a Taken Glow around them, that means one of your teammates has already passed on the corruption buff to that enemy and you have to quickly find a different one. If you survive the corruption, you can take out some more of those Taken Lanterns. Once that imminent wish timer is over, that's when damage phase starts and the game actually has a minimum set damage that you need to do However, the more of those Taken Lanterns you take out, the longer the damage phase is and you can do even more damage than the minimum required. If you did not reach the minimum required, you'll just repeat the cycle until you do. If you did reach it, you're going to jump up to the next platform and repeat that entire cycle there. Your main goal is to make it all the way to the top for an even longer damage phase. But first, the game makes you go through three different areas where you're required to do a minimum amount of damage. Once you've made it to the very top, you can see there are three different rocks, which means three damage phases. Once the first person steps on the first rock, damage phase starts. Around the boss, there's going to be eyes that spawn, and if one of your teammates shoots those eyes, it will extend the entire damage phase. After the boss goes immune, you can jump over to the next rock to do another damage phase, with a total of 3. Also, please watch out, the eyes by the boss do a massive amount of damage to you, and once the boss goes immune, the entire rock turns into that Taken Goo. After that damage phase, you're going to get spawned back to the beginning, and you're going to repeat that entire cycle until the boss reaches to the final stand point. For final stand, it is going to teleport you to another area. Same thing, the boss is going to have eyes surrounding him. You can have one of your teammates keep shooting them so they don't hurt you and they extend the damage phase. Make sure to do a ton of damage until you kill the boss. I hope that you and your friends have a ton of fun playing this new dungeon, especially with all the traps. Thank you so much for watching the guide. I hope it helps out you and your teammates on your next dungeon run. I will be doing a lot of raffles for the dungeon over on my Twitch channel for anybody that is interested. So I'll either see you at my Twitch or in another YouTube video. Bye!